So welcome to the uh, new growth meeting of the Board of Assessors. Um, we are going to start by opening the meeting. I move we open the meeting. And I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. OK, and then I would like to open public comment. I Aye. will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. OK, uh, any members of the public? Uh, unfortunately, in our agenda, we only have a public comment at the beginning of this meeting. Um, so uh, and a disclaimer you're supposed to read to. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by the Board of Assessors. If any other persons present are doing the same, you must notify the chairperson at this time. The chair and the Board of Assessors reserves the right to remove or have removed any person, persons for profanity threats or any continued disruption during the meeting. Uh, public comment. Um, uh, it, I don't see a standard thing here, but normally we do uh, three minutes. And um, I'll ask. Uh, is there any members of the public who would like to provide an up to three minute statement right now? I'd like to just for the record say that it'd be helpful to have an opportunity to comment once I broke the agenda. I don't comment on it, the things that happens. Yeah, of, of course. So next time, uh, Devin, can we make a note to add another public comment period at the end of the agenda? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Um, any other you can just leave that open until yeah. such a time that the public would like to comment. Uh, I would. In, uh, that's not how, that was not how it was posted. Oh, OK, we're not allowed. The, not allowed. the agenda. Was on the, the agenda is on. The website, although everybody's not checking the website at every moment, I would <laughs> definitely say that. So if you. Hmm. Yeah. The agenda is not on the website. It's just one line. It says new book. This is the agenda. You know, it, if you click through, it pops up. Yeah. I just I just actually reviewed it. Okay. But um, shall we get into it? Okay. Let's begin. Okay. Um, so I guess uh, any other members of the public? Uh, motion to close public comment. I'll no second. All favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so, um, like I said, um, I've been working basically trying to keep a record of minutes of what we've been doing. That's what this slide deck is. Um, I have been sharing it and I will continue to share it to the extent that, uh, that you guys all think it's okay. In particular, I'd like to share it as part of public materials. I think, Devin, I shared a previous version as part of public materials in a prior Board of Assessors meeting, if I recall. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, we'll do it again. Um, all right, so if you guys are okay, I'd like to just get straight into it. Mm -hmm. We don't have a ton of time. Um, basically, I've divided our agenda into parts um, all about new growth. And essentially, it's really three parts. It's new growth that's already in our system. We just haven't booked it. New growth that's in the city, we haven't found it. And promoting new growth, which is mm -hmm. making new growth we don't already have. And then I got a couple of new topics, uh, just ideas to throw in there. It's actually more than just those two now at this point. Um, okay. Um, you guys saw this chart before. Uh, I'm going to send you, here's a new version of the chart. Uh, so this version is uh, new growth only. Um, so according to my amateur draft analysis of five years of permit data provided by uh, Mark's team, uh, there are 1,605 permits between 2019 and 2023, which I believe would have the potential to be considered new growth based on the permit type. Um, although many of the permits from the early part of that, 19 and 20, were all so-called building. They didn't have a type. Um, so there's some noise in there from that. Um, this chart is simply blanks. Trying to understand the nature of this data and how other departments in the city can use the data. And the blue bars are just how many are blank. And there's a total of 1605. So like this one here is basically saying that all of the so-called work squids, whatever that is, are blank. Um, all of the square footage are blank. Just had a question from you, Randy, about, hey, can we look at the, you know, analyze this by square foot? We cannot because they're all blank. Um, well, not with the permit system. What? No, they're blank in... In the new permit system? They were well, blanks in the new permit... The analysis I was able to do from Patriot. From Patriot. So right. we have it in Patriot. Yeah. Yeah, but Mark, this is from the permit system. Mm -hmm. And um, 
this is just straight up the data that um, Mark Steen gave me. Um, and in that data, the square footage fields are all black. Yeah. Can I just ask on this for a minute? With the new system, the, the new system, the municity, mm -hmm. is that a requirement that that line be filled in in that? It, it's probably filled in by the person of mm -hmm. the application. The yeah, application. they probably don't know it. Well, exactly. I mean, what would be nice is if they periodically requested from the assessor's office a data file and, and if the application could automatically populate some of those fields. And so we do have that <clears throat> integration, but I don't think that the square footage is part of it. So oh, it's possible okay. that we could maybe provide that in some way, shape or form, just automatically, because that's also if there's a new address and we, so we had, it's the Baker and Tradesman extract. Yeah. That's basically calculating it. We had a problem with it where it wasn't working. And then, well, guess what? You can't get a permit because that address mm -hmm. isn't in the permits. However, the, the issue is, do we want to populate it with the square footage that's in our assessor system? If they're looking oh, to build okay. a new structure, mm -hmm. we want yeah, square right. footage, square of, footage, footage of, of the proposed square footage of the new structure. Right. What square footage is that? supposed to represent yeah i guess that's a great point yes the square footage of the improvement of the potential project or is it the existing square footage so <clears throat> i guess it's none of those things since no one ever types it well it, it, right now it's neither yes but it, it, it's actually further. a very important part of of getting to the end of the new growth because i've seen them i've seen it where we we totally missed on that one way or another so it's it's not something to we can't we can't miss that. Well, so that's that's, okay, a, that's a, important an, an open point. point. Um, when does it get? It, it can get measured with. It can be measured at the estimate. I, I'm thinking of one that is a huge, like well, a double size of the house that never had a square footage. But in. ultimately, the assessor's office needs to determine for assessment purposes what the taxable square footage. When it's done, yeah, it's nothing. When it's happened. done, yeah, this is at the beginning. Well. What gets reported at the beginning could be the net square footage, interior, yeah. okay. gross so square footage. The, the, the action yeah. item here gross is finished area. The action item here is to get with the permits department, with Mark's department, and ask them what would it take to actually populate that field in the state of I'll, I'll take ownership for that. Okay. <laughs> Okay. I'll talk because it's also what square footage do we want? Do we want that? What what is intended to be captured there? Mm -hmm. Is it the square footage that's existing mm -hmm. that we could populate through our, right. our integration, or is it the square footage of the potential project? I'll do an open email and you can do, be the closer. How about okay. that? Okay. That's fine. All right. Got it. All right. Go ahead. Sure. What, what strikes me is that uh, you have an applicant who online fills out the initial application. Doesn't happen? Uh, well, I think they fill it out basically on paper or they can fill oh, it really? in a PDF and then it's someone it's in the permits department. Because every it. other community allows for Yeah, I think that that's what Municipi does. It's, it's it, where they're filling it out. Oh, is, is it online now? I, so. I didn't yeah. see it. Yeah, I went it's, started. It's, it's started. This yeah. is, it's started. Yeah, it's so, exciting. So, so the property owner initiates the permit uh, application. It's supposed to be the contract. Or the contractor, yeah. either way, but then there still needs to be an approval um, process, and it seems like at yeah, that point that's later on in this presentation. We're we're really just getting started. <laughs> before, before the before the building commissioner signs off, okay, go ahead with the project. There are probably some number of minimum fields that there are be. quite a number of steps involved. Okay. Um, I'll zip it for now. No, it's, it's okay. It's just we we have really limited time, and I I have that stuff later. Okay. But another thing I'd like to point out in this chart, though, permit close date. Two thirds of these have no permit close date. Mm -hmm. um, then just a little stuff for your reference. Uh, if you look at this later, um, the little brown database symbols show a field that should be shared between the assessment and the permit database. The green one is the one that actually connects them. That's actually the parcel number, although they call it work print key. Okay. Um, so that's the one that ties the databases together um, if you want to tie them together. Um, and the blue boxes are the ones that I believe the assessor's office would want to have filled or be useful. Um, so, and then you can also see just by the by, a lot of these don't, uh, two, about two thirds of them, or about one third of them don't have contractors. So later on, when we talk about owner, 
uh, run, re, uh, run improvements versus contractor run improvements. It's about one third owner as far as I can see. Um, so just a comment, you know, on, the, on whether it's closed or not. Yeah, it, it doesn't, it's kind of irrelevant to the assessor's office of whether it's closed or not. Was there a permit, yes or no? And then we want to go and look at it. And whether they have closed or not, we're, we're not checking with them or it's not part of our regular process. I, I have a whole set of slides just on that topic. Because that is, I think, one of our key topics is open versus closed and how it gets that way. Okay, go ahead. Speaking of that, um, open permits. Um, so the issue here, and I think we talked about this last time, is if the permit never gets closed, then it never gets to the assessment department. No. No? No. It's no it's open. If it's open, it gets to us. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. It's irrelevant whether it's closed or not in the building department. Because we get that information and we're making our own determination of whether we're going to go and look at it or not. I mean, uh, the one thing, and we've talked about it, and Vicki and I have started interacting with this more, is if, if something is withdrawn, we're getting all the permits. But if a permit gets withdrawn, we don't get a notification of that. And that's what she's starting to do. That's hey, good. So the communication that needs to happen to get us to the finish, finish line is yes, the problem. improved, yes. So okay, that's good. Improved. That's great. Part of our communication or something that was noticed that, okay, we need to do something. About okay, so this. you're on that. Great. And, and Thank you, Ben. So, part of what we already have started to do. Okay, good. Awesome. All right, we're done. We can all leave. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great, though. Um, yeah, and then there's other details in here about the whole subcontractor, subcontractor permits, which are less important. Um, one idea I'd suggested before is that we should actually ask applicants to put in a suggested close date. And if they, if if that date comes and the permit's still open, then we close it. However, Randy's saying that it, mm. I'm, if I'm picking up, he's laying down. He's saying it's not as important. Doesn't matter. Well, if it's that part. Or, or does it? Because not really. Because we just know, you know, what is it? This is it going on? Is it something that is? Uh, it, it's going to be value and potential new growth. For instance, for a new roof, I'm not going to go out and look at every new roof mm -hmm. because I can't micromanage everyone's new roof depending on how old it is. You have a roof, you don't have a roof. And so I'm, I'm not necessarily, so I, I was notified. It doesn't matter to me whether it's open or closed. I know that what, what I've been tipped off about what's going on. And then am I going to go out and look at it depending on what it is? And in the case of a roof, I probably wouldn't. My observation would be, is it a different material? Than what was there before we have asphalt shingles and now it's a metal roof well i mean i don't have to go out to see that i can just see that the permits for a metal roof and then make the change in my system which may affect value but even those are just a small you know it's a thousand dollars difference or between a thousand or two thousand usually and um you know it might uh might add value but i don't think that we would capture that as new growth even what i find really helpful is when you get a uh, a a good descriptive narrative on exactly what's being done. You might get a little blurb, uh, Reno. Yeah. Okay. Reno, well, you know, renovating the whole house or you. And in other cases, you get three paragraphs from someone that's telling you all this information that you don't, or I've seen that. Too, yeah. That they have I'd rather have more stuff. than. Yeah. It's better to have more than less. Um, well, one thing that's limiting that is the actual size of the description field mm. in the PDF. Mm -hmm. it's okay. Quite, it's like a one line. Really? It's not like a big, now they yeah. do say attach stuff. You know, you're supposed to attach all kinds of things, but in the actual yeah, it's database. Is that in the, on the online, on the new online? I've never the seen the online thing. I'm oh. excited that it exists. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay. All right, so this open permits issue. Um, and I just want to show how many there are. Um, so this is a very strange, uh, Result. So again, of these 1,520 permits, um, so about 500 of them are closed, is about a third. And then this is how many years it's been open. So this five years open, um, and that must have been pulled in 2019, because that's five years ago. And here you can see there's 246, 2020, 182, 141. So you would think that there'd be more open permits recently, and the ones that were old would be closed. But that's not what we see here. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So and a lot of that, that whether it's closed or not, I think, and I wish Mark was here to, to speak to this, is whether the owner is, is following up and yeah. coming in and saying, oh, yeah. okay, I'm done. Because a lot of times yeah. they procrastinate or they have financial challenges yes. and it goes on and on. So 
I think it's just the nature of the way building permits are that some don't get closed. Because I, you know, another part of that is does the building department have the staff to follow up on all of the open permits that haven't been closed and say, hey, you know, it's been two years, uh, you know, what's going on? Are you done yet? Or so realistically, that? just so everybody knows, they're one person short. They have that in their budget, but mm -hmm. there's a vacancy there that isn't filled, just as you. So we have to go on mm -hmm. with that, knowing they're trying their best, knowing that Randy's job is not as dependent on the closing of the new permits is what I'm saying. Right. So we, that's that loop. Yeah, because we sort of have our own uh, criteria for what's open and closed mm -hmm. once we receive notification of the opening up of the permit. Mm. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So this next one, now we're gonna again, we're we're still in the things that are already in our systems, but we just haven't booked. Um, you guys have seen several versions of this analysis. Um, this was a little bit tricky to put together, and it's not perfect, but. Again, I was connecting the permit database and the asset database mm -hmm. so that I could try and find for a given, for each one, I could find both how much money had been spent on that property and how much the property was worth. So this is the aggregate construction cost over the five years. So they pulled multiple permits, you'll aggregate them. Um, and it's just taking the ratio. So if there's a lot more construction costs than the value of the mm -hmm. property in the first place, that's probably a suggestion that's asset value might need to go up. And so this is part of uh, Carol and I just went yeah. out this morning and started working these lists. Oh, that's so great. So 49 Bank Row, 15 Arch, 15 Perfect. Bank Piers, we, uh, we visit them all today. Some there weren't any issues, but others we uh, identified uh, things that, uh, action items that we would uh, undertake to we also sort of determined that instead of going out in the field, we maybe need to work the list in house first and, and just do investigating on different things and different factors or, or parts of the areas of the property record card to see if there's an explanation, uh, you know, prior. I just to want to speak on that 15 arch again, which is the bane of existence for many of the neighbors yes. there. Okay. That's been a like a little hot topic there. And, and that's because of the odor. Uh, noise. No, noise, noise, the noise. Okay. Um, that is, uh, you know, one driveway width away from the next person. I, I'll never prioritize your job because you're in charge of your department. But this is a place that we visited mm -hmm. this morning. Yeah. We were also over at. That's why I mentioned the odor because we were across the street and down a little at six slash one Arch Street, mm -hmm. and um, and I could I you know. And depending on which way the wind was going, I was like, but you know, okay, what, what is that? Right. So I just yeah. also want to say this, you know, this is something that's going to come up. It, again, your job, not mine. Things are going to come up, you know, with city council. And as we go into November for the uh, a single tax rate, um, I'm looking at one more, one of my all-time favorites here, a little further down. I, I'm excited about 173 this. Main Commercial on Main Street. Although you don't see a large disparity there. That was one that I had spoken with you about that had been drastically reduced several years ago. I just want to make sure, you know, no matter however anybody feels like about single versus However, anybody feels about a single tax rate versus a split tax rate, I'm just pointing out um, a couple of commercial ones that they are watching. And, and you prioritize that in the way you see fit. Again, I think it's very hopeful that a straightforward analysis technique like this mm -hmm. can surface things that we all knew informally, like these mm -hmm. different properties. Now, not every property that's on our tip list has floated to the top in a simple analysis like this. But I just want to suggest for future, straightforward analyses like this done on a periodic basis might be a decent right. way of moving forward. Okay. Right. So, but... Hi, David. Hi. I just like to point out number two up on the bottom, 105 Newton Street. That is now well over a million dollars, Randy, and I haven't looked okay. at that last week. Yeah. 
That's a, so I don't know when you got these figures from, and I believe oh. 85 Fort Pierce Street. We looked at that this year. That's the roundabout books where they oh, yeah. converted the. Yeah. We, so th- we I mean, found a number where the uh, valuation had been increased. Uh, yeah. Um, so I printed out the record card only yesterday, and then the value is different than what's on this list. Yeah, well, it must yeah, have been there and a lot of my data is old, right? Because I get a big giant spreadsheet and then I have to process it and do all this stuff. It's not the actual system. So part of what I uh, suggested to, uh, to Randy is that at the end of this process, we come back with the spreadsheet showing the action that's been taken and the result uh, of that. And so uh, you'll have at the end of this, uh, a, a line by line response. Comments column. Right. It's something basically to say what was found or what um, But uh, since you're here, Harold, and I know you're like one of the people who knows a lot about Assess Pro or Catalyst or oh, okay. whatever it's called today. Today. Um, <laughs> so this kind of stuff I'm doing in a spreadsheet, can Catalyst do analyses like this? No. 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 The problem with um, the Assess Pro system is that um, they don't have a built-in query and report utility, which drives me crazy. You have to work with the canned reports that provide you. Um, I have here and there and it, uh, used access as kind of a back end. Yeah. Uh, to, uh, Instead of just a spreadsheet. Yeah, right. you know the right report to extract. But, <laughs> um, I, I always get my hands slapped uh, because uh, you 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 stand to potentially corrupt the database. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, well, in, in future, um, maybe we can look at in, in our department um, a set of desk procedures to allow uh, the department to repeatedly do the same analysis yeah. over and over and not have some random retiree like making typos. But but <laughs> but this is very useful. Yeah, you... speak up whenever you want, but what number did you talk about? What number were you talking about? I didn't hear the parcel that you <laughs> spoke on. Me? Yes. The second one from the bottom, 105 Newton Street. Okay. And 85 Pierce is the other. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Those have already been updated and they're much better now. Okay, very good. Thanks. Question uh, number, first one, 41 Main Street. Is that the parking garage? I don't know. Well, it's a, a city property, so... I'm thinking that main is probably yeah. It was like eleven eleven million dollar park address. I'm assuming that's the park. Yeah, I, I tried to fil- filter out all the city ones, but for some reason that didn't filter out because it's mixed use. And oh, I think cool. it might be that's uh, right next to the fire station. It's probably fire station that thirty five. Yeah. It, that that's I think that is that could have been part of a. They re a they renumbered the fire station. To go along with <clears> something <throat> that was of historical mm-hmm. significance. Oh, that's the new fire station. Because we that's, merged. That's the new fire station. Yeah. Yeah. And so that could be a, yeah, that's a, new fire station. a parcel that's. It could be an adjacent parcel. That, yeah. uh, they, yeah, I that think. Merged with the, the other. They, they changed the number with everybody's permission, I'm sure, to align with something that was either of. Yeah, 41, or, right? It was 41 because it was, yeah, yeah so that's, so, that's something to do with. That's a fire station. Thank you. Okay. So again, this list is full of junk. Um, but I hope it inspires us to do what we need to do. Mm-hmm. And in future, we can make yeah. it part of our normal business process and it'll yeah, be more reliable. Mm-hmm. Fire station. Okay. I would, I would suggest one thing you'd look at is the dates. Because if you look at when we finalize new growth against the permits that were issued up until June of this year, then you could do it then. If you wait until the dates before you run the spreadsheet, so that we have finished our side, it may give you a better idea what's happening. Yeah, right. Again, if it was part of our normal right. process, it would happen according to our calendar. <clears throat> right. The other thing, the other thing that I've implemented now is, and it's it's a, again challenging with the Assess Pro software, but to run a report of um, properties that we list as partially complete. So you go out la- right. uh, last year. New house, 50% complete, you list 50%, but then, then it doesn't get relisted because, yeah, it's got to stay on somebody's list. So oh, it's 50%. I need to build that. Right. On their, on their, yeah. Yeah. And so, I, I, okay. 
I, I've got a comment on that as well. I'm sorry. That was one of the things I looked at when we started in town, Harold. Um, yeah, there are under depreciation. And I've been yes. using them. So it's a matter of having to look at them each year to go back and make sure there's nothing been changed or that something right. has. You have yep. to be aware of reports, all the information's there. I mean, Randy and I were talking about this yesterday, weren't we? Yes. Yes. So, and and for my, you know, in this, in this case, uh, Assespro is better than Vision because it lists every card that's on the parcel, not or every building that's on the car, parcel, not just the main building. Mm -hmm. So if, if, it's it is there is a tool there that we could use. They also have their filter, right? And um, I, it's nothing that I got extensive training on, but with the personal property project. They needed certain information so that they could import their information into their system. And I got to sit there and watch as one of the people use that filter. And they use that to somehow extract it almost like a report. Um, I, I don't know how or, or the filter I, carefully employed uh, is helpful. Sometimes I like to just get the whole dump, don't put it in a spreadsheet yeah. and then and do my own filter. Your own thing. Yeah, I, know. Uh, I don't have the. I don't have the agenda open in front of me, but I just have a question, okay? Because we do have limited time. We bring people together from different perimeters. There are folks here that aren't, don't know all about the assessment, but that came to tell us. We're, are they come to tell us what they know about new growth that's happening in their thing? I just want to make sure that we're allowed. Yep. Okay. We'll move forward. All right. We'll move forward quickly here. Okay. So again, we get the idea on this one. It sounds like there's already moving forward quite a bit since last meeting. Um, this is just a summary in the last meeting. Um, Randy, I think um, uh, the assessing department made a number of requests to the building department, uh, ideas to consider. We've talked about some of these already. And then the building department made a couple of requests to assessing, again, ideas to consider, things that might make the integration better. Um, do you want me to move forward? You guys wanna stare at this for a few minutes? I don't think any of this is really surprising. Yeah, um, okay. Um, now we're going to move on to uh, not in our system, but it's in the city and we just haven't discovered it. Um, so the two big ways this happens, uh, especially now, the number one way this happens is through the building inspections department. Um, my understanding of how this works is somebody will call with a tip mm -hmm. and the inspector will often know that person or will be able to evaluate from what they're saying sort of the uh, likelihood that the tip is reliable. Mm -hmm. And then if they deem it to be reliable, they'll go out and check it and uh, handle it appropriately. Uh, this is an informal process, an informal and subjective process based on the expertise and uh, knowledge of people that's in that department. Um, other ways of doing this is uh, tip line. Um, so for this year, mm -hmm. calendar year 2024, uh, in the assessing department, we've been just collecting anytime anyone says, hey, there might be something going on. We're not validating any of it, just taking it all. Um, and it, this includes uh, many tips for many people we all know and love. Um, and um, yeah, so we're just collecting it. And um, uh, Randy, I think you were saying in the one of our last board of assessors meeting that you guys were actually starting to work down this list too. Yes, and that's what uh, Harold and I did today. That's so not list only well. not we we looked at three different lists. So the one I made up that was comparing the price per square foot, uh, the one from you with the permit cost compared to the, the value, and then this also. And we printed up. I don't know how many do we have eighteen or between. 15 and 20 property record cards, and then went and, and looked at them individually. And, you know, starting with some of the ones that were the, you know, like a seven major nav. And uh, I saw that marked, I, I saw a marked increase in evaluation there. Yeah. Thank you. So we're, you know, we, we visited there today and talked to their security guard <laughs> who gave us some additional information. And I also, um, part of, you know, looked at a couple of the different marijuana related uh, parcels uh -huh. and um, 
our conclusion, I think, is that we need to add something into Patriot for that class of property, for that type of, yes. uh, for, you know, uh, distribution center. There are two ways we can do that. Um, what we described, uh, what I described to you, Randy, is creating a new building type. We call it marijuana grow facility. And then we have a, a rate that we would develop for that. Mm -hmm. Right now, they're listed basically as industrial properties. Uh -huh. Um, internally have a price per square foot associated with that. So that the build out on one of these facilities is substantial yes. to get it to the place where you can actually grow the, the green exactly. stuff. Exactly. So, um, hmm. so uh, the alternative, and I just thought of this, is uh, uh, to um, create a, an extra feature line. Uh, so you preserve the, the basic building as an industrial building, but then have okay. uh, a line for um, uh, all of the infrastructure that goes along with uh, okay, and that's another that's that's that probably that might be a better way to go yeah. because what they have to put <clears throat> into that to become any kind of a marijuana, <clears throat> marijuana entity is enormous. The expenditures, <clears throat> yeah. So and Harold was just talking about yeah. I've been in places. I've been in a number of these facilities. Uh, have a pretty good handle on right. what it takes to. To, uh, in terms of uh, climate control, yes. uh, air conditioning, and uh, filtration systems, uh, water. Um, and we could see a lot of that from this place that we went. And, and yeah. was, now we didn't have to go in, but all the stuff in the exterior of the building yeah. you can see is, okay, this is well, a you, you, control. You can't get into these buildings without, uh, uh, short of uh, an act of Congress. Absolutely. Uh, uh, you got to get decked out with all kinds of lab gear. gear and such but right. but still uh and i also now have some some good data on what the build out of one of these facilities looks like so that's great to make a new category because yeah. I, i've been watching that since the beginning the laws began i thought what they have to put into it and it's not commensurate with where we are yeah. that's great that we're going to make it okay onward very good yeah yeah the 15 hour street is an example of they, they only occupy a portion of the building. So keeping the building industrial and then just that portion of it. Right, it might be sense. a better way to react to it, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Good, good point. Mm -hmm. So we're only capturing on per, per, <clears throat> per square foot basis that portion of the property that's used uh, uh, as a growth facility. Yeah, and, so. the, and the tip line was very good there because they've seen the <clears throat> campers in the back that, well, it's well, moved right along. Interestingly, I don't think I saw a permit on, on the record. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I think so. I, there, there had to have been a permit. Oh, to, well, actually, yeah, because we have the property record card and the printed right out on there, aren't they? So, yeah, you didn't see one on that one? Well, uh, it, anyway. it, it's just uh, in general, during the political campaign, people were just coming out of the woodwork saying, hey, there's a guy over here who did a barn he's not supposed to, and I, I didn't know what to do about that. Yeah, uh, it's nothing I could do. But once the board actually formally made that this tip process is a business process and it's not formally anonymous, how you have this thing, you, you know, once you have a process in place, then uh, you can work it just like everything else we do. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know time is short. Just one little comment about contractors that are out there that do not take out permits. I had one show up at my condo out in Western Mass, we're trying to get a kitchen renovation for, done. And we had three contractors come in, two legit. One fellow said, now, just so you know, right off the bat, my quote's gonna come in at about two thirds of what anybody else is quoting. Okay, um, what's the but? Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't work under permit. I don't believe in permits. It's none of the town's business what I'm, what you're doing here. And okay, um, being in this business, I don't need that <laughs> surfacing to, uh, promptly uninvited, but. But but this is relevant, that's why a tip line is important because there's no way we're gonna find that. Yeah. Unless, and, and fortunately we have a lot of uh, people in Greenfield who are very civically minded and are, are willing to um, help us. And because it's anonymous, they don't have to worry about retaliation from any neighbors. Mm -hmm. That name never gets in any system. 
You can call me or someone else here just verbally and say, you don't know me, but check out, you know, 57 pretty plain. Mm -hmm. That's all we need. The other thing that I have learned from the building inspector is the building inspector actually knows um, at least one whose name I won't say, a construction firm who he repeatedly goes after because he knows that the actual dollar figure will have nothing yeah. to do with reality. Right. And so he has been back. He will go back. And I think that's an important thing for you to know. Yeah. And that was another thing that I kind of, uh, I don't want to necessarily say don't agree, but the permit fee, the fee for your yes. permit is tied to how much you say you're doing. Uh, exactly. First incentive. And, yes. and so, uh, so I don't know. I, I have pulled the FERCOG, what, what they do, like they have an actual process for it's going to be this much, it's going to be this much, this is what the permit's going to be. But the developers of those in construction, especially those who are well known to this municipality, do know those things. So they would underestimate and say, I'm making the tiniest little thing so that I could get a you know, hundred dollar permit. Right. Mm -hmm. so they, in, exactly. they're, they're adding half a house. I, I will say I have just like looked around this permit database and there are some crazily low numbers in there. Right. Okay. Yeah, I'm no contractor, but mm. yeah. When was the last time I replaced the roof uh -huh. five hundred dollars? <laughs> it don't happen. Bad bad thing. Okay. It's All right. House, so, baby. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so, it's in the city. We don't know about it. Here's how we can find out. So right. we have the building permit, uh, our building department has their own tip line. Yeah. And now we're developing our own, or should we have a tip line available in multiple departments or, or multiple areas? I think it ought to be just one department, personally. Yeah. But if you don't know about that. But and if somebody comes to the office, oh, Randy, uh, neighbor across the street's doing this and that, I'd invite them to go down to the building office. People are going to go... They're going to give a tip to the person that they know. I, my person, I'd always call with Mark Snow. Uh, I've also, since you put it, I. And I've, that's sort of my point is if, if they've got more than just one place to to give us the information, maybe yeah. I would. I'm conscious of time, and I thought I have two department heads just sitting here that have tips with what is happening now. So I want to make sure that we get these to these tips because I have yeah. that. Chair of Economic Development and Planning, and they can give us the tips on where there's going to be new growth soon. So you're yeah. So I I, I just want to say though, um, there are pros and cons of having separate tip lines. Yes, I think there are. Yeah, pros and cons, and um, yeah, if we could have one, but it was uh, accessible in more than one area. I guess it's kind of like De everything. Devin, is that a lot too much work on your end? Maintaining a tip line? Yeah. Or like, no, who's getting the tips? You or? Um, they're not really coming to us. They're coming to yeah. our board. I just okay, said, fine. Okay, fine. Yeah. You're okay with it. I can. I mean, I can share a spreadsheet with anyone. Okay. Fine. <laughs> All right. On, keep going. Onward. Just a question on that. I mean, the tip line, I mean, we, we just call it complaints. Sure. The, department, the building inspector department receives complaints. Um, and then when they do, they have to go out and investigate those complaints every time. It only Mark Snow is the code enforcement official for the city. He, yeah, actually, well, he said they don't investigate it every time. It, he said he evaluates the reliability of the tip. And then based on that, he'll go out and do it. <laughs> yeah, my understanding, they, most of the time they go out check the situation out if there is an, a complaint. It's all yeah, complaint based. And uh, But I'm, the only point is that he's the only official that can mm -hmm. do anything about it. Mm -hmm. Code enforcement official. So yeah. the tip lines would be with him for sure. Oh, okay. He's the code enforcement yeah. official for yeah. the city of Green. Yeah, I'd be more than happy. Nobody else can issue a fine on that such a thing. Like That's that. a big zoning point. amendment. Except, I mean, a zoning infraction or a building infraction. I'm just concerned about the interdepartmental communications piece. Uh, point. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just easier if you have one. Yeah, that's okay. a good point. So it's a systems issue. We can work on it. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Or do we have until two, or what, what's the? I, I'm going as fast as I live in camp. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I, I could I, be here I until think, three. I think I think we're scheduled to two thirty. I just want to, I, and I think next time I'm going to say this out loud. Next time I want to start with next, the new. I want to start yeah. next time with 
commu- uh, th- these things because I don't I want I don't lose sight of that. They come to tell us about the bigger things that they know are coming. Okay. Okay. Um, so we do not have um, a database in this city of where apartments or units of living are. Um, we have our parcel database, which shows where all the parcels are and whether they're multifamily or not. Um, and then we have the clerk, which has a uh, census. So where people live, what address and unit they say they're at. What we don't have is the actual address or a unit or apartment number for every apartment. Um, in theory, like I said, we know how many there are because we know how many are 105s or whatever. Um, but in practice, we don't have the detail. Now, why would we want that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of towns have rental registries for their health department and so forth. There's, there are a lot of reasons why different parts of the city might want it. I just want to point out, we don't have it. It is, a, that information is contained in Patriot. Yeah, and can I ask a question about that actually? Because yeah. I've noticed we've been compiling in our department a list of multifamily mm-hmm. um, apartment buildings, yes. two family, three family and above for a project we're working on. And I've noticed that the unit both Patriot and the other property card have a number of unit box. Yes. And what feels like frequently to me, they don't match. Yes. And so I've, I've wondered if I've misunderstood what they mean by number of units. Well, the real thing that yes, but, but more, there's no addresses. So unless, unless you tell me different, as far as I could see from the manual for assess pro, in that that sub listing of rows mm-hmm. for that property card, um, there's no place to write in there the actual address of each unit, whether it's three B or two H or whatever. And part of the problem with that is um, apparently the source of those mm-hmm. addresses is anyone. It's the person who moves in there. It's the owner. There's no official source. The post office does not invent it. The permit department, the building department, does not invent it. No one invents it. Um, except for when you file a change of address and say, I want my mail delivered, that's where you define, I live in 2H, the postman comes, there's 2H. Um, Randy, can I rely, for me, the address doesn't matter. I mean, mm -hmm. in some circumstances, maybe it does, but I would like to be able to take my Excel sheet and sort and have a list of all the um, apartment buildings that are six units and above in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. Can I rely on the unit count number in Patriot? In theory? I would say, in theory, yes, you should be able to. I can't speak to how it's been maintained for years. So in practicality, yeah. I'm going to speak on that because uh, as, as someone who goes from one to one to one, I, I, I would rely only in partially on that. Um, I've walked around to the side looking at electric meters. We had one that just came up that was rather infamous here where there was one meter for two places. It is not entirely... A reliable number. I know that factually, and it is much to the benefit of the owner of the parcel, a multifamily. If it says five, when indeed there are nine, it is to the benefit of the owner as opposed to the city. So the so thus the reason for any type of a tip line because a. The parcel is more valuable if it has nine apartments as opposed to five. Um, well, it's everybody else in their house. I was hoping that um, we could do better than a tip line on this one because we have the census. So with some chewing of data and some manual labor just in the system, you mm-hmm. should be able to identify um, the actual addresses as well as units. We should be able to get it all. And there's another way that you could do that mm-hmm. without going... The because I do that, I was at home with this manually, manually. Yeah. With the book that Kathy Scott has printed out that comes from the census. Yeah. So I'm gonna leave that. that that's what I'm talking about right here. On so that. I got this electronically. Okay, go ahead. Uh, records from her. Mm-hmm. Um, but I couldn't do this complete thing because it's gonna require manual labor, because as is the case I mentioned many times. In all of our systems, the addresses don't match. Even if it looks the same, has different number of spaces or periods or abbreviations, it doesn't match. Like it's really hard to connect these things by address. Um, it's very unreliable. Okay. All right, now we're coming to the new stuff. Got there. Okay. 
So I've mentioned this to a number of you um, that I have found in the um, assessing uh, uh, 101 in the, the, um, the special guidance they sent out from DOR um, that almost the only place to get additional values through actual construction, except um, public improvements or just in, in general, any zoning change um, can be used to justify an increase in asset value. Is that how you read the law as well? Potentially, you still have to rely upon some sort of market analysis to determine whether that that zoning change actually realis really translates into uh, For sure. enhanced value. For sure, of course, yeah. Right, and I mentioned that before. So, okay, we've got beautiful new sidewalks in this neighborhood. But we can't just go and put an extra five grand on everybody because there's new sidewalks and we change the zoning. It has to play out in sales. We need to see that in the market. Now, in this neighborhood, things are selling for more. And part of it is because of these improvements that were done. Yeah. Have exactly. we made any, it, since um, fiscal year 23, have we made zoning changes that, that we can think of? Uh, Eric provided. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Right there, actually. Uh, I was about to say that, but it's on the screen. <laughs> well, you told me. I wrote it yes. down. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there are opportunities, right? Yeah, so we rezone part of that plan, uh, general commercial <clears throat> plan industry. So mm -hmm. that's an opportunity. Um, same thing with the Oak Hill area. Change. Well, that changed from general industry to rural residential. I don't know what that does, but it's a change. And there's a possibility up there of there being something residential. Isn't that correct? Exactly. There is a residential development now as a result of the rezoning that may be coming in. It hasn't been permitted yet, but it's working on it. It's in so progress. That will be new growth with all the new lots that are going to be. Exactly. You know, okay. And so that's another way that it's realized, but it's not, you know, anything that would have, okay, we can flick a switch now. And add twenty thousand dollars to value to every parcel in this area. It exactly, has to play out. Yeah, yeah. The construction of houses. Uh, just seems a, a great way of getting new growth without actually having to swing a hammer. <laughs> um, so, if you guys, with your expertise, can sort of figure out more opportunities or things that already happened, you know, th these kinds of things, the more we can find, they're all free. Well, I mean, we're working on that. We kind of a little bit. So, well, there's one I was going to mention that, you know, I met with a counselor who's interested in some zoning changes. One is to allow us to detach successor dwelling units by right in all districts instead of by special permit. I don't know if that would trigger any type of new growth or not, but, but unless you realize that one gets actually constructed, then this growth comes in. Exactly. That's what that would be. We couldn't just add, yep. you know, because you can do this now, it doesn't make it more valuable. Or, unless you do. I don't know. Actually, Errol, uh, I look, no, typically okay. there, the only time I've seen that play into growth is when somebody actually puts an addition onto their home to build out that accessory apartment. You can't a reconfiguration of the space in between might actually be detrimental to value. Mm -hmm. Sure, but, but you can't say, for example, um, the zoning rule changed for RC and uh, now people are allowed to put in an extra well or something. You can't say that uh, their value, their property is worth more, especially if over a year, like all of a sudden sale prices have been going up for that area. But again, to that point, when the sales come through and they provide us support. Yeah. Uh, and exactly. of course, yeah. But not before the sales, you got to wait for the sales yeah. to come through. And it's a whole thing of defending themselves. Yes, we could do that. We'll just add this on there. Everybody will. Right. Right. Is everyone that gets that increase going to be happy? No. And are they going to come in and start complaining? And then uh, if we go to ATB, uh, pros and cons. I wouldn't yeah. think of that personally. I've seen a few of these come in. I would not think of, I would think of that as a case by case basis if that actually happened. The one I was thinking of is the one that we met. I met with the DPW director and consult with you on is a street away in existence that it would be actually changing the value. I, I think of everyone as a short street um, that uh, we may be, we, 
we may be changing the betterment process, which I need to talk to you about and with Eric, how to do that. But every petitioner or, or six out of seven people on the street wanted this done. Mm. It would be putting a drainage system in. It's, it's a very complicated one, but I have thought of that as that would change the value in that neighborhood because that applies to everyone. Right. Well, it's similar to Picket Lane, where they have the betterment for the sewer. Right. Uh, you're stuck yeah. with a septic system. But here you're talking about betterments, a special class of tax. Right. Over and above real estate. And, 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 so, it's, that yeah, and so it's not really necessarily new growth oriented. Yeah. I mean, that rarely way. have I seen those sorts of improvements enhance the value. I mean, collectively, if you have a a total neighborhood transformation that results in higher property values. Yeah, you can measure that. Uh, but one of the classic questions I get is, well, is there a premium for being on public water versus having a well? I haven't been able yeah, to you measure. Can. Yeah, it's tough to quantify. Yeah. Um, if everybody on a street can't get up the street, if everybody on a street cannot exit the street <clears throat> and, the, and the city helps in some way, and then all the people agree that they couldn't get up the street, and now they can. Wouldn't you say that that was more valuable? And I would think that the challenge of whatever access was there would be resulting in a, an existing reduction of values. <clears throat> it's getting a little discount because you have this challenge of you live on a dirt road, for instance. And so in my small town of Montgomery, we get an extra 10% off of our building value because we get the services, the plow comes okay. after they do all of the paved roads. Okay. And so, but, but on DOR certification or through that process, you're going to say, okay, show us the evidence in the form of sales that point to that 10% reduction. Can, can we not use that from other parts of the state and just say in general in Massachusetts, whenever somebody gets a new sewer, their house that generally goes up by 5k or something. I mean, that's how the whole uh, camera system works, right? It uses single factors across many, many, many properties. In, in part, yeah, it's being able to defend that. Just saying, I mean, okay, then. again, just to, to summarize, this is the only way that I was able to find that we can get new growth without actually anything happening. So if, if anybody can brainstorm a way of using this. We can talk about that because I thought that one that I was thinking about was definitely, I don't know what that is. <clears throat> I mean, it's if just it's free not, money. If the lots are considered undevelopable because there's a challenge of access and now we're putting the road in and it's a city road with yes, all those undevelopable properties will now be developable and, and we could change that to, you know, a site value and increase the value okay. you know, one, in that circumstance. Mm -hmm. But that would be where, okay, before it wasn't, uh, you weren't able to access it and we considered it undevelopable. Now it is developable because we put this road in. Well, if, in, in the case of Stetson Drive, it is a private drive and it used to get graded. So, you know, it is passable, but lately though, because of the rains, it, oh. a portion of it's impassable. But that's just recent. It's typically a road that gets graded by the city on occasion and passed it. Again, if you guys can get together with your expertise on what changes value and your expertise on what zoning changes happen and you can bring them together, I mean, it's free money lying on the floor. Um, Definitely as a result of this, I'll be like reaching out to Randy and all potential zoning or zoning members that are happening. Just, mm -hmm. just so he knows, you know, if nothing happens from it, that's fine. But yeah, just to be a greater communication sure. now, just to make you aware of what's happening. Sure. Do you know of any, just while we're here, so do you or Amy know of any other things that you want to share with the group that you know that are happening that will be coming along that we don't want our um, people in charge of new growth to miss? I'm not that you're going to miss. I'm just, this is the time to no, share no. with well, Give people here know Aldi, right? What I think is going on with that? Yeah, I would say the Aldi project, um, but if someone's aware of that, so oh, gone I love Aldi's. Building permits, they're, they're already pulling building permits, so it should be in the system. Okay, so then it won't be new growth for fiscal 25, but potentially for fiscal 26. Yes, yeah, so I think the construction should be 
potentially done by the end of this year. There so then there. there's a chance to yeah. capture something. Okay. Capture some, although it's nothing that we'll be able to put through through cast classification and it might be realized after that. Okay. Any new subdivisions uh, planned? We haven't had a new subdivision since 2006. There's talk of one on off of Valley Stone Farm Road. Oh, yes, there is a potential for this would be a multifamily development initially off the Stone Farm from mm -hmm. Lane Road. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be uh, talking of 24 units. Very, very small units mm -hmm. uh, with shared space. Um, Only in the conceptual stage. That yes, it's just, is that affordable housing? It uh, it will be more for great yes. mm -hmm. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. So, Harold, you asked before about the process and all the steps. When I want to go to Amy next. I think sure. she's fading me to say. <laughs> no, I don't know that this is new growth per se, and I think I already put it on your or your radars, just the expansion at um, Mati, which is Argotech of the Industrial mm -hmm. Park over the next three years. I don't know that there's any actual construction involved or if it's just reconfiguring pre existing. Yeah, I think a lot of it is internal. $26 million. Dollars. Certified, but they were going to invest $20 million and it was basically into their own uh, personal property, which is taxed. Yeah. The yeah. Manufacturing is just, Their own like, personal property for manufacturing is not taxed. Is that right, what you said? For a manufacturer. So yeah. they're doing improvements so that they can manufacture better. Or they're replacing their old equipment with new equipment. It's still part of the exempt part of the process as a manufacturer. So that was one of the things I didn't agree with or understand when they got the second TIF. I wasn't here when that happened, but they had a TIF for however long and then it ran out 20 years. And then they said, oh, let's, you know, can we have another one? And we went along with it. Okay. And yes, they're doing all this investing, but they put a new parking lot. And so it wasn't like it was all taxable dollars. The new parking lot was taxable, but everything else was all internal and replacing stuff in on the inside. Mm -hmm. That really didn't matter. The industry doesn't really seem to help very much. Right. And they, well, another thing is the reason they got decertified is because they weren't satisfying the new uh, employee end of, uh, of the agreement. But there is another new something I don't think you maybe can say, but something else is happening at the end or in the industrial else? park. Or, yeah. um, I think that's the only one of any value or so unless they're putting up another building, it's really not. Yeah, and I think it's they're adding reportedly employees and new manufacturing lines, but I don't get the impression. Yeah, so that's their structure. internal equipment that is uh, yeah. tax free or exempt. Unbelievable. So Amy and I had a good discussion about new growth. And uh, one of the ideas uh, we talked about, there are several ideas we talked about to generate more new growth, um, the real new growth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so one of them is, and again, a lot of other cities are doing this. Um, <clears throat> the biggest problem in housing today is that contract contractors cost too much. It just costs too much. Um, so one way to really uh, generate a lot more new growth is when owners do their own work. Um, and so that's a big barrier right now. Um, it's uh, no one knows the codes. Um, people don't know the building process. Um, the building process, as Mark has explained many times, is required to be reactive. He mm -hmm. can't help people. But in other towns, um, they do a pre-sales function. As for those of you who are not in the corporate world, so in the corporate world, um, when a big supplier is trying to sell something to a big company, they invest months of staff and effort to create a proposal, which they bring, and then the company may say yeah or nay. So it's this pre-sales process where you're trying to help somebody figure out if they can build a new apartment in their house or something like that. And um, it's, we would have to have a person maybe to help people or whatever, and then they may or may not do it. There's no fee collected or anything. It's just an investment to try and get people to do stuff. Um, so those are some of the ideas we talked about. Amy, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Um, and then related to that, uh, last time I mentioned this idea of, um, sorry, just skip ahead, doing some kind of workshop Similar in the assessor's office, we do these like big uh, lecture classes where we tell people what their taxes and how they work and everything. And uh, potentially the building department could put on something like that where they say, here's how our process works. Here's what we expect at each step. Here's how you can do it. And just in general, culturally, just saying, 
we want people to build things. We're going to be friendly. If you show up, we're going to be nice to you. Please show up. Please have ideas. Please come to us. And then if we had a pre-sales, we could actually say, please come to them. They'll actually help you instead of the building department, which please come to us, but we are really not allowed to help. Um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. What what is what is the formula that that you look at in assessing for? Because there's a lot of people that have ideas for new growth and then it's housing. We have a couple of projects that are known to to us as in what may be happening or in the old Wilsons. Um, where do you decide if it, is that going to actually be um, growth that we're going to capture or is it going to be because it's going to be low income housing? I just want to ask mm -hmm. because people come to me with all these ideas. You actually can't build yeah. housing fast enough and we have a city to run. We have people on the street. <clears throat> people need housing. I know that. We also need tax revenue. So where's the advice here? Like, what are the numbers? If you put in one or two, one or two low income, because I am a new mayor, I don't know the answer to this. And I do know that what I've heard is that we have things that are coming in that are great because we need new housing. And then the flip side of that is that there may be no tax revenue. True, not true. What's the cutoff when somebody's talking to me? You know, like they're just talking to me. I don't decide, but you know what I'm saying? The easiest to respond to a specific uh, question and project because there's so many ifs, ands, or buts to, to the answer. Well, um, go ahead. Go ahead. But right. um, so you talked about Wilson's, for example. Right. First question, what entity is undertaking the work and who owns, who will own the property? Is it a It'll be owned by TCB, the housing portion, but not the nonprofit. It's going to, they are going to be paying property tax yeah. on, I think, a lower value because it's. I like hope not property. to step on anybody's toes here. Go ahead. Since in the butt. But. I asked. Any project that takes Greenfield's prime real estate and permanently entrenches poverty into that center is ill-conceived. Yeah, basically detrimental. You've got a beautiful downtown, a diamond in the rough, call it, that in my mind is ground zero for high end, higher end developer. We're ne never going to be a community of millionaires and billionaires. We should not be building affordable housing in the center. Of I just push back a tiny sure, bit. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> and just say that I think we use the words affordable housing and that your brain flips to poverty is the word you use. And affordable housing is actually, um, depending on the percentage, is where our firefighters and our teachers and our municipal employees can actually afford to live. So it's not but, poverty. But you want to have a vital city center that supports the shops, the restaurants, everything that we picture when we see a vital city. You need people with income, disposable income. Wholeheartedly agree, and I think we need more market rate housing, but I'm just gonna say that our school teachers and not, firefighters and employees have income too. But what I'm saying, what I'm gonna come back and say is, yes, I agree, we need housing of all across the spectrum, low end to high end, however you wanna, describe it, but ground zero, your prime real estate should so, be right. It's a long main street and there's room for all of us. So I'm I have gonna... walked every inch of the center 10 times now, taken a hundred photos. There's a blank canvas there that's just waiting for a, a beautiful development. I'd like to come back and I've made this offer um, and I've, I've got about a three hour presentation that I'm trying to shrink down specific to Greenfield, just notions about how we could turn the city around. You might like some of the ideas, you might not like the ideas, but I think what I can present is at least one person's vision for a vital city center 
but more importantly, how we get there. So it's great to have a vision, but okay, who's going to build it? I address both. Both the action plan, how you uh, how you actually bring together the pieces. What I'd like to suggest I'd like to do a trial run. I was just going to say, board. my department would love to be a trial run for you too. We would be thrilled to hear that. And I'd love to have I'm all the good ideas that would that. emerge. I, I, I actually need to hear that because and, that, can I just tell you this? <clears throat> the thing that is already, you know, we're talking about one thing, the thing that's already, you know, like 90% done or whatever stage it was, I had had no part of. Uh, as you know, I'm new. This is my seventh month. I am aware of what we yeah, seven. Like seventh seven. month. But I said some things were, were there before I began. But keep people come before me and they go and 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 they come before me. And I don't know. I can tell you I'm I am never ashamed to say what I don't know. They're they'll come and they'll say, but we we need this we to, for us to get started. It seems like everybody that comes actually they, they need something to get started. <laughs> that I feel like saying. Do anyone have any money to build whatever it is that they want to build? But if, and this is, a, I agree with you, it's a beautiful place, but to keep, my goal is to keep everybody in their homes and for their tax rates to be affordable. And I know we need housing, but it, it, it has occurred to me, I'll, I'll be told one thing on one end, and if we put so many affordable in, then it becomes tax exempt, which we can't which I'm not sure how many how, that we can afford that. I need to know the answer before I make a decision. So I think that would be maybe not part of, maybe it is part of a new growth meeting and people can come if they're interested. I don't ever want to drag out department heads if you don't want to hear this, but I need to know it because they're coming. They have an idea. Going up is easier than, you know, we have things in the center of town. We have, I look at another another parcel in the center of town in a parking lot that may turn into something. What should it be? I don't know. And it's beyond my level of expertise. So I need to talk to people that know more of in the end, if you get so many, uh, whatever is it, light or something, credits. Litech. What is it called? Litech. Litech. And it's great. I wanted people to be able to afford it, but I want the whole city to be able to afford it. So do you think that we should have this at some point, this this well, thing? We are being presented with a unique opportunity to yeah. offer. For I'll people. take it. I'll take it. Because yeah. you send me packing and say, nice, don't. There's not many people that have the experience and uh, background that Harold has to say, because he's been in so many different communities, and I know because I've talked to them about I have a seat on a lot of economic development. And, and so he's successful, it, unsuccessful. Exactly. He's seen what has worked for different places, like was it Framingham? Uh, Marlboro. Marlboro. And Northampton, too? or Well, uh, Northampton is kind North of a Hampton case study that, that I've been following. So, so anyway, he's seen what's worked in different communities, and he's seen what hasn't worked, and now he's offering... To share that, that, that that's so. terrific. So, uh, Amy, um, it sounds like uh, you, uh, this would be the point. So that since this is a new growth thing, so that um, maybe it can be one of our meetings or yeah. one of yours where you can come and, and present the strategic. And, and I need to be a part of that because I yeah. need to. Hear, yeah. I need to know how it's done. So that oh, that's great. But I'd like to yeah. gather awesome. some of the great ideas that will come out of that to supplement. Okay. Supplement what I've uh, put together. Who, who else should be? I I I'm, I'm I could in. be ready in two to three weeks. Okay, I'm in. A, a, Eric's in. Amy's in. A, Amy's I'm in. in. Thank you. No, no, I, I, I want to ask. Um, We're all in. Okay, who needs to be there? I know what I need to know. I mean that, that I have things to learn. I'm very in, interested. Does in it who else should be there? housing a fair bit, or is it really focused it, on? It's a very holistic, if you will, um, approach that not only lays out, granted, my vision, uh, which I'm inviting some, some conversation about, but also, more importantly, the, the method to actually take that plan and implement it, to use, yes. um, and, and these aren't novel ideas, these are um, uh, uh, 
concepts around the country and world uh, that that have been successfully used uh, to um, to actually implement. Uh, right. And and the the big the, the common approach I see in a lot of communities is to take time. We build a little vision of what could be. We print some nice glossy literature. We we'll have it out in front of town hall for people to look at. Won't somebody please come and build a new Amazon plant in our backyard? And that constitutes the, long, the, the, mm -hmm. the sum total of what, what happens. Um, I won't go into the details now, but I, I, I think there's a vehicle uh, for actually taking that vision and executing on it. Right, a vehicle and a strategy, basically. Yeah. Um, I'll introduce you, for example, to, to a concept I call the Greenfield Development Corporation, a private entity. Um, and I'll tell you how we build that. Uh, it I'm, actually exists. It's just not. Well, not maybe active. maybe yeah. needs another name, but uh, um, but uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, assemblages how you bring together um, projects, uh, both in envision what we want to build, how we bring the pieces of property together, and then invite developers to come. This is the project we want to plant on this block. Because it happens exactly the opposite. I can yeah. tell you this from firsthand experience. <laughs> People knock on the door and they'll come in and they will have their idea. Yeah. And, and their idea, <clears throat> There's nobody else that's coming in the door is the idea that would be it would be working for them and they're looking at getting all every credit that they could to walk in the door i don't i do not know how to get the other people to walk through the door i know what i i have some visions of what we so i guess we're in agreement that this is a good thing yes that we would come together and what we'll, and we could be ready to do that the end of by the you know the end of august and around you said three. You know, I think it would have to be before the end of August. Before the end of August, I think. Yeah. Okay. So before the just, end. Of just name a time. Two, three weeks. Uh, three weeks. Okay. I think it would be a lot of fun. Uh, frankly, I and it's it's like a vision for Greenfield that someone with experience and seen things that have worked and haven't worked. You know, you know that that's one thing. Could, that, I'm, just one thing. Input. Could could we make sure to do this one as a public meeting? Because um, this vision thing, this is. I, Go ahead. I was actually going to ask the opposite. Oh, really? Um, yes. Just okay. because I think there are existing plans for Greenfield. I think there are a lot of moving parts, and I would love yes. the opportunity to just have a very frank yes. conversation and digest what you have and and talk about how it fits with what already is happening yes. that maybe all the people don't know about. But then we should, that maybe I don't know. And then yeah. I, I mean, I've tried to read maybe, Do you guys want to like meet offline and maybe do you go through uh, Harold's material offline and then? Then you guys make a presentation that's uh, for for public and because yeah, I mean, I anytime we come, it I has to be. It will public. be a public component of yeah. this for sure. Yeah, but I, I don't think the initial. I, I I agree with. Um, yeah, I agree with Amy. I, I think I've been very transparent with anything that was happening here. I mean, I, I I'm doing something with one school, and I said a committee cannot be in charge of what's happening to one particular entity. But I said, in the end, we have listened. Yeah. Uh, I listened to the community, but I think that that. Yeah, issue. I, it's not that I don't want there to be a public component because I think oh. that would be great. Yes, I think um, uh, I'd like to be able to talk about particular projects too, and some of that's just not appropriate in a public forum. What I'd like to do is have an evolving discussion that takes my vision, incorporates the ideas and thoughts of others principally from the planning and, and economic development uh, area, the mayor's uh, thoughts as well. Uh, and then uh, somewhere down the pike, maybe four or five, six months, I would actually hire a videographer to, to, to create uh -huh. a half hour thing. Um, video that brings this all together in a beautiful, well-communicated way. We've done that before. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, we, we've done that before with mixed success. Even I know, I've only been here five years, and I remember the, uh, the 
somebody came in with the like for only forty thousand, we'll make you this thing, which will sell the city. Yeah, yeah. No, I think right, you know what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, this, and there was something you said before that it didn't work. I can't. Uh, I have to get going for another. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. We're done. Uh, okay, we oh, have sorry. another something that somebody just did. That um, it's a whole. <laughs> We and I talk about so all, all the time. The, somebody just did, I don't know if it was whatever that group is that comes and looks at everything, the plan makers, and they did the whole of downtown. They did a whole We have a couple of downtown, yeah, yeah downtown, a couple of downtown, downtown packets. So, um, so anything like the master plan? No, yeah. nothing. Yeah, well, well it is a plan and they have found the same too. with stuff. But and, I and do it. think because it is, it's confusing to me too. Because, um, the, and, and I've said this to Amy, I'm not saying anything that I don't know, but with everyone says it's going to be taxable income, and then I find out it's not. And it is, we, I, I'm a retired nurse. I believe that people need all the services that they do. We have many of those here. Um, and we have, you know, I've heard other studies that showed like the length of Main Street that we have. You know, it, there's more Main Street than we would actually need than for commerce. I've heard different things about that, but we have a lot of of service things on the bottom floor, even of uh, of downtown. And is that the best thing? If it's zoned for that, you can't really change that. But a vision for what that is, I think I th I know that the taxpayers need the tax relief also. <laughs> so we have to make a plan that's good. So I'm for that. What else? Anything else? I don't want to take everybody. Um, it just occurs to me that we still have our, should we reopen public comment? We're not allowed. No, 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 no. Okay. No, we only had the one in the agenda at the beginning. That's now fine. we could close the, we can close the meeting. Yeah, I, I don't have any significant new slides. Okay. Um, it's just oh, something okay. I've already showed. Um, if we close the public meeting um, in a, then well, I'll make a motion to close the to close the meeting then. Okay. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Aye.